health-wise, my diabetes has totally improved. Everyone is telling me now how much healthier I look, and I'm telling everyone how much healthier I feel. I recommend heart and body extract to everyone. Anybody over four... Tobacco and Farms did a bad, bad thing to Sella Costello, the third Vietnam veteran of the Army, a sniper. Then he worked as a police officer, sheriff's deputy on the border with the Border Patrol. Then he was a DEA agent, uh, the most highly decorated and the commander down there in Latin America, witnessed cocaine dealing shipments by our own CIA at El Apengo uh, Air Base. We then interviewed the CIA folks on the other end of it, like Terry Reed. Up in Mena, Arkansas, with Oliver North, the Clintons, the Bushes, uh, all the drug dealing, all witnessed, and, and the CIA solicitor general uh, and their inspector testifying before Congress that they did indeed bring in the drugs. They still bring them in. The banks launder it. They license cartels to bring the drugs in, the majority of it. The government ships some in itself, but they mainly license them. Then they leave them alone if they launder the money properly like they are supposed to do through the big central banks. If they don't, they then get pinched. Uh, in fact, uh, just like he did a great job making the film JFK, that's why if you watch the movie Scarface, he did five years of research, uh, Mr. De Palma that wrote it, and of course with uh, Oliver Stone, uh, uh, who directed it, and who was involved in it. Well, no, Oliver Stone wrote it, De Palma directed it, and... Uh, I've seen the making of that, and they went down and met with the cartels. They studied how the banks launder the money. They really show it in that movie. So Selly got raided by the BATF, basically set up, because uh, he's been exposing government drug dealing. He is in the film that is on your screen. Uh, I forgot to tell listeners out there who are listening on the AM and FM dial and on the Internet at InfoWars.com that we're going to start the video cam feed 30 minutes early in the third hour, not just the fourth hour today, but never fear, PrisonPlanet.tv members. This will be archived a few hours after the show today, and so you'll be able to go up there and watch the hour and a uh, half interview or hour interview and then my news blitz in the last 20, 30 minutes uh, with Sally Costello, uh, the third today. And so the live video cam, the document cam, our guest cam, the cam on me, the video feed cam, we have five different feeds in here. Uh, that is all live right now. Sally is uh, a big part of the new film, American Drug War. He consulted on the film American Drug War that's on your screen, as I did. Uh, I am in the uh, extras, uh, according to my own recommendation, that I not be the voiceover for this, uh, but I am in a big part of the three hours of extras that are in the film. And so now another reason to get it from InfoWars.com. It isn't even available in stores yet until uh, May 24th. Well, we have it discounted by $5 out of the gates. That was I consulted for free as long as I could get the film first, and so that is why we have it before anybody else does. American Drug War, the last wide hope. But Sully Costello, when they raided him and set him up, uh, they said, "Oh, big star on TV," you know, and, and and made a big point of that. This is just political persecution. He's been told by different DAs, different prosecutors, that he was going to be politically uh, punished. Sully, thank you for coming in the studio with us. Well, thank you for having me. It's a great honor to be here today. Well, it's a great honor to have you here, Sully. Thank you, thank you, and um, I certainly hope that the uh, American people will get an education uh, on what's really going on with the government today. Now, I want to talk about what happened with your case, and I want to talk about uh, where where it's going. Uh, you know, you, you, you've been indicted, and I haven't even talked to you yet about what happened uh, this uh, week when they were going to you know, go ahead with the proceedings, so I want to discuss that with you. But then with from your law enforcement 
history and Vietnam history and intelligence history and police officer history about a local, what we, what, what we believe is a murder here in town. You've come on before to talk about how they kill you, how the mafia, how Mossad kills you. So later I'm going to give you some of these facts and just get your off-the-cuff uh, take uh, on that. But first off, recap what happened with the BATF, what you're facing right now. Well, basically what happened was that uh, for the past year or so, um, there was an individual who was selling me guns. Um, you know, he'd buy them and, uh, and uh, he would uh, sell them to me and I would buy them and I would resell them at, uh, at the gun shows. And basically what happened was uh, I found out that um, uh, it was against the law uh, if I gave money to somebody or loaned money to somebody to buy guns and uh, that was a, a clear violation uh, of the law. And uh, basically the individual that um, bought those 30 or 35 guns uh, basically broke every law there is to be broken, and yet he was never arrested. And I called a selective prosecution because they basically target me. And and there's a history to show that um, I've been forewarned that an assistant United States attorney out of the McCallum office, uh, a totally defense attorney, uh, for me to be watch my back because they were going to come back to me and they were going to get me one way or the other. That's because you've testified as an expert witness. Exactly. I've testified on the corruption that the government has conducted, the outrageous government conduct that they they, they developed during the case, uh, the perjury before the agents, uh, before grand juries. And I exposed all that, and uh, now uh, we also have exposed that there, there have been some uh, transcripts that have been changed, or babied, as they, as they say. So all this information that I've obtained f with, uh, within the past few years uh, has come back to uh, bite me in the butt for exposing it. And you had no criminal record before this. For listeners that don't know who you are, give them, I know you don't like to talk about yourself, but you've had quite a history. Exactly. You know, I come from a very patriotic uh, family. Uh, American, uh, to be an American was number one in my family, uh, patriotic. Uh, my family served in, uh, you know, my uncles, everybody served in the military. And as the only son, I was told to go serve my country, pay my dues to my country. And, and I did, and I followed my dad's footsteps. He was in law enforcement, and so was I. Um, he was also uh, in World War II. He was in World War II. He was shot six times in the Philippines. You know, he, he paid his dues, as they say. And, um, you know, we, uh, we continue to, uh, to be proud Americans, and we try to do everything that uh, law abiding citizens will do. And basically, I've and then never, you went to Vietnam. And da, da, da. I went to Vietnam. Uh, I, I did what I, as an infantry sergeant, and I was down there uh, as an 11B bra, as they say, and um, spent my year in Vietnam. Came back, uh, went to school, got my degree, and uh, uh, worked in, as a police officer in the state of Texas, detective sergeant, and so forth. So I got over 20 years of law enforcement experience. I'd never broken the law in my life, um, in my adult life. I, I just uh, never been arrested or anything like that. And then all of a sudden, the government comes after me because I, I had, first of all, um, this in, I think this was initiated with my expert witness. And secondly, when I tried to set up a sting operation against ATF a few months back. And you did that with the local news. That, in exactly. fact, you exposed, they did expose, that they were spying on everybody, violating their Fourth Amendment with cameras rigged in uh, there in the South Texas gun show. Exactly. What they were doing, they were filming the shows, and they were profiling people that were coming out of the gun shows, and they were entrapped them in trying to buy the guns that they just legally bought um, and also they were going out to the uh, people's residence after they bought the gun to find out if they still had that gun with them and that's Gestapo tactics you don't you know you don't profile it's against a lot of profile and yet the ATF was doing all these kinds of atrocities and nobody was stopping them Okay, but let's go back now, before we get more into the story, uh, for those that don't know, and you've got your book, Powder Burns, at powderburns.org, that everybody should visit. Uh, tell people about your experience in the DEA. My experience with the DEA was something that I am not very proud of, uh, number one. Number two, I believed that what I was doing, uh, yeah, by placing my life on the line, that I would make a difference in preserving my country. And as it turned out, uh, after 12 years with the DEA, my last six in Central America, um, found out that we were the enemy. We were the guys involved in the atrocities. We were the guys that were involved in drug trafficking. Uh, the CIA was heavily involved in, in drug trafficking with uh, Posadas Carriles, with Oliver North, Felix Rodriguez, all those Cuban exiles that were down there running this covert operation that was run by the White House during the Bush-Reagan era. Who and, blow up Olympic athletes in their uh, off time? Exactly, convicted, and, and not only that, and then blamed it on other people. You know? Yeah, they, well, they, they, um, Luis Posadas, of course, was held by uh, by Felix Rodriguez, a CIA operative. Uh, 
uh, exiled Cuban to come out and and uh, and uh, help him escape from prison and brought him to Central America and, and worked at El Pongo Airport involving running drugs into the U.S. Specific. Let's just hit the you know the key points because I want to get into your case, but I'm able okay. to understand the background on this. Specifically, key evidence that you witnessed yourself of government shipping the drugs in mass out. Exactly. There were large shipments of uh, of drugs coming into this country. Now they were Guatemala or Central America, should I say, was used as a trampoline uh, for drugs to go into the U.S. And uh, I personally participated in refueling those clandestine airstrips. Uh, airplanes that were are being uh, refueled in uh, in Central America, and uh, you know they were shipped with. Uh, they had hundreds and hundreds of uh, kilos of cocaine, and yet they were never being seized in the U.S. Uh, and basically, it was a CIA covert operation that was being run uh, to funnel uh, drugs and profits into the um, contras in Nicaragua. And of course, a lot of the American. Uh, uh, agents that were involved were lining their pockets and they're going to Swiss bank accounts. Going to Swiss bank accounts, and now they're going to keep a safe selling from terrorism. And then it turns out that every one of these so-called Al-Qaeda individuals was admittedly CIA, used against the Serbs in the late 90s, used against Iran. Uh, these Wahhabis out of Saudi Arabia are buddies, and that they weren't even involved in the attacks, but they play the part of that and then release these tapes that are uploaded uh, by the Intel Center that's run by all these former CIA spooks with the video posting in the same layer, and experts have looked at it. Mainstream News has reported it's staged. Uh, how, how do you think people in our government got to the point of being willing to carry out terror attacks? Well, it's basically what's happening now is that uh, there's no shame. They're so bold in what they're doing, and yet they're trying to blame those third world countries. And I've always said uh, that every major terrorist in this world work for the United States government at one time or another. So we, we, we're the ones that are building this, uh, this beast, as we call them. And, uh, and it's to destabilize all these third world countries. Exactly. And, and, you know, we know where Bin Laden is, you know, but we need him for this war. You know, we've got the best satellite networks in the world. We could actually f find out where he's at, but we need him as a reason to keep with this war going on. This atrocity is happening down in Iraq and Afghanistan. Well, they're now claiming that 9-11 Truth works for the Al-Qaeda. Well, certainly. There's always going to be a spin put on by the government and, and anything that but they why do. why is it so ridiculous now? Well, because it's obviously that uh, what they're telling us is not true. Uh, it's obviously that, uh, or bold, as I say, uh, uh, that they continue to feed uh, American uh, all these lies when, in fact, the American people are starting to wake up a little bit, not that much, though, just a little bit, and, and that's why we're having a response now uh, of what happened uh, uh, the past eight years here uh, with, with George W. And um, basically, we're, we're, we're going to, uh, come November uh, of next year, we'll find out who's, uh, you know, we're, we're on the right track or not. I think we're going to find we're on the wrong track, but they'll at least have to act like they're changing. There's no doubt, though, this has been the black op presidency. I mean, they've just gone wild. This is this is what the private guys that run our government and, and the CIA and others, they just work for the big banks. I mean, this is who we're dealing with. These are, these are people who are destroying our country. <laughs> Everything they're doing is to get rid of our country. And I just, how dare them say they're patriots? A exactly. And, you know, the same people that uh, the same... S Terror cell that I called that worked back in the 80s uh, for the U.S. government are still at the White House. And, you know, um, all those people that, that were involved in those covert operations are still running uh, uh, covert operations in Iraq. Sally, I want to get into your case now. You were, you were on with us uh, last, uh, early last week. Um, now there's been some new developments. Just to be specific, here with all of the listeners it's a gray area with these straw purchases you can go to a thousand gun shows and see people selling 20 30 40 50 guns they go out and buy the guns they're collectors they sell some of them you got into this you told me because you're an author you would go to the gun shows and sell powder burns you're a veteran you like guns you're a you know, retired police officer dea and you're there just selling a few shotguns handguns things like that you told the whole story about uh, how, hey, you know, let's get into this. Hey, give me money. I'll get you good deals on guns. 
and how they selectively enforce on people. So when you say, well, I didn't know it was illegal, well, you know, the, the BATF, the scallywags they are, I mean, they just do what they want. And, 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 and so I want to be clear that you're saying, okay, I'm guilty, but the guy that sold me these guns, you know, uh, you know, last time you said it's pretty obvious, you know, that, 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 that he was setting you up. It's just like Randy Weaver. They kept saying, please, I'll give you five times what the guns were. You just saw it off. Just, just take that. And his kids were hungry and he said, okay, and did it. And it was all because he wouldn't snitch on locals. And this is all admitted. So they went ahead and just came up and killed his family. Uh, I mean, who are these guys in law enforcement? Because I know they're not all bad, but it seems more and more it's this attitude of we run everything, we're the boss, and they really are just just thugs who want to rule. Well, the, the problem that I, I foresaw uh, when this, this occurred to me was the fact that those agents, are a lot of them are Iraqi veterans and uh, Gulf veterans uh, also um, from the Gulf War. And basically, you can see it in their eyes. These guys are suffering from PTSD. I mean, big time. Yet they carry a gun and a badge, uh, you know, just like I, I did, you know. And, and certainly, um, it's poor judgment in their part and uh, what they do. And uh, right now, if you go to a gun show, we have guys, uh, we got half of the gun show that sells AR-15s without paperwork. And yet, um, they, they don't touch them. They don't, they don't do anything to them. And they know very well, but the, their whole purpose on this thing is to shut down the gun shows under the Second Amendment. We're, we're losing those rights to bear arms. Uh, yeah, so everything is only registered guns. Now, now, let's go back here. People think PTSD means you lay on the ground and can't get up. No. It means that you, you, you stay active and aggressive and look for fights and look for excitement. And then if you don't have that excitement, uh, you then get totally exhausted. And I'm not saying I have it, but it's similar to being really working hard. If I go on a week-long vacation, I feel like somebody beat the hell out of me. Because I have to keep working all the time. Or the, And a lot of these cops, you see them, they're out of their minds. Because it is a stress. More alcoholism, more suicide, you know, everything. Yeah, you know, that that's the problem, you know, that uh, we, uh, PTSD cannot be cured, number one. Number two, I've been certified by the Department of Justice when I work for the DEA that I have severe PTSD. And from my veterans, being a Vietnam veteran, the same thing. I've been certified as having major PTSD. And that's why you kept looking for the action. Uh, you know, and writing that, coca fields, writing facilities. Right, writing, writing the edges, they say, you know, trying going to... Going in and doing drug deals with killers. Uh, yes, and, you know, I was putting my life on the line, and I really thought that at one time that I was actually doing it for my country, uh, which I was, but the majority, I was still looking. That's why when I left Vietnam, I went into law enforcement. I was still looking for that bullet with my name on it, you know, and the guilt well, you that we have. Well, you also get addicted to the action. Exactly. It's an addiction, uh, and, uh, you know, thank God that um, one of the things that I has saved me a lot was the fact that I don't drink or do drugs, but my, my, my medication was um, having a sense of humor, and that's what kept me going. But yet, it's so depressing right now that what happened to me that I, I felt, well, where did I go wrong in my world? Well, Sally, you got to beat them. I mean, you know, good guys always get targeted. We're going to talk about trying to support you and help you on the other side. The fourth hour is coming up. You can see the video right now if you're a PrisonPlanet.tv member. We'll be right back with Sally Castillo. Okay, Sally. Um, it is a big four members out there. We're just going to continue with the stream. Um, you know, this is uh, this is not FCC censored. Now you can talk about whatever you want. Uh, I mean, just 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 bottom line: Are you pissed off at these guys? Absolutely, I am so pissed because you know we're we're all veterans, and those guys were veterans too. And and I'm pissed off because I was targeted. Um, they lied to me about a lot of things, which I thought maybe a professional courtesy you would be a professional about what you're doing. And the bottom line is they didn't. Now they had offered me a plea bargain. The plea bargain is that I, they want to know all the crimes I have committed in my life. They want me to testify on whoever I gave the guns to. They want me to put my, you know, you know, lie, uh, lie and, and, and perjure myself in the sense that if they don't like my answer, they can charge me with perjury. And then they wanted me to plea up to 33 months in jail. You know what happens? It's not about doing the time, but it's the fact that I lose all my benefits if I go to jail. You know, and and how is it possible that the government is asking me to sign a plea agreement when they know that I am severe on PTSD? Well, I want to talk about this more later. It, mainstream news in California is admitting that one million police and their families 
and one million drivers are literally above the law. They're allowed to drink and drive. They don't get tickets. But as soon as a cop does something good, or as soon as you fight evil, now they throw the book at you. Exactly. So, so you get special treatment as long as you go along with the evil. Exactly, and that's called professional courtesy, according to them. You know, uh, uh, you get stopped, and uh, you know the, whether you're uh, DWI or DUI or whatever. And and a lot of times, uh, you know, the blue coat. You know, you take care of your own and um, give them a ride home or do whatever you want to do. But that that that's backfiring in a lot of them because. You know, as you know, law enforcement has the biggest divorce rate, the biggest alcoholism, and so forth. And that's why it's called a tarnish badge, because of all these uh, atrocities that happen with them. Absolutely. We're about to go live again with all of the regular radio listeners out there. Again, PrisonPlanet.tv members right now are able to see the video of all of this, and we then archive this each day for PrisonPlanet.tv members. So I'm going to come back and plug some sponsors uh, at the end of the third hour. Then we're going to start the fourth hour now on the network this is our second day of doing that uh and we're going to get into how folks can support you where this fight's going we can also thank the folks that uh did support you uh, in your fight just a few days ago again we're going to go ahead and uh go back into regular transmission with the network a little bit of the behind the scenes here for prisonplanet.tv viewers as there will be no warning. 866-644-1933 find the book at survivemartiallaw.com protect your family Well, nobody can say I'm not living my life to its fullest. Nobody can say that I was squeamish or that I didn't have an effect. And I know you listeners out there are having a great effect, too, and I salute each and every one of you. Every one of you out there is just fabulous, and we love you. We're about to start the fourth hour that's going on on many of our AM and FM affiliates, simulcasting on WWCR and the Internet at InfoWars.com. If you are a PrisonPlanet.tv member, you will be able uh, to watch uh, the fourth hour here with the guest cam uh, and the document cam and the DVD cam where we can play you audio clips, video clips, computer clips, and a lot more. Uh, before uh, we continue with Sully Costello and how he's been set up, and I also want to talk to him about this, what we believe is a murder uh, of Riyad Hamad uh, here in Austin, Texas, the Palestinian uh, activist bound and gag thrown in the river. I want to in, uh, encourage everybody out there to support our sponsors. If you go to InfoWars.com, there is a banner uh, that says Aloe Ease Body Cleanse. Aloe Vera, really good for flushing out your system, making you lose weight, detoxifying your GI tract. A lot of people get cancer because all the toxins we eat build up there. Great sponsor, Aloe Ease Colon and Body Cleanse. But there's a link to New Vitality with the hundreds of fabulous products. This is one of the biggest, most respected mainline vitamin supplement companies out there. We're very honored to have them as sponsors. Uh, you can go to their website by linking through at Infowars.com to newvitality.com or by calling 1 800 569 4056. 1 800 569 4056. One of their other great products is Super Beta Prostate. These are well known herbs for shrinking the prostate, giving you better health. Even a lot of doctors are now prescribing these herbs for prostate. That's medical doctors. 1 800 569 4056. The well recognized, well documented, proven herbs and remedies. That's what they've got at. Uh, NewVitality.com or 1-800-569-4056. And in closing for this hour, we can't do anything we do here without your support. We can't do anything uh, on this radio show without your financial support. And that's why you need to get American Drug War from us. It's not available anywhere else right now. It is available at InfoWars.com or by calling toll-free 888-253-3139. This proves how alcohol and other things kill hundreds of thousands, marijuana, no, no one. It proves how the government shipping in drugs. It proves how they selectively enforce things. Went for Tommy Chung while he smoked pot with Schwarzenegger, the Nazi pig. I mean, it's just such an incredible film. I consulted on it, and as you can see, I'm on the back cover. Alex Jones, Sal Costello, Robert, uh, Mike Rupert, uh, Robert Steele, uh, just uh, Danny Danko of High Times, 
medical marijuana with uh, Dr. Jensen, just so many others. This is a very, very important film, American Drug War, The Last White Hope. Also, the new film, Washington, You Are Fired, is out. It is part two to America, freedom to fascism. I hope everyone will get it as well. It needs to be seen. It needs to be gotten out. It's We are allowed to fire these people. We are allowed to kick the government out of our lives. I also want to ask listeners to support all of our AM and FM affiliates by supporting their sponsors. Support uh, everybody uh, that sponsors this show. We couldn't do it without them, and we can't do it without you, the listeners. Uh, we're about to start the fourth hour. Everybody on the radio network can listen or, again, watch, watch us online at prisonplanet.tv when this show becomes a TV show. We're streaming right now. But, Sally, in the minute we've got left in this hour, give out your Powder Burns website. You are basically broke right now as a school teacher. you and your family. Uh, powderburns.org. People need to go there. Buy your book, Powder Burns. It's almost out of print. Excellent book. They need to make contributions to you, or you're going to go to prison. Exactly. I, I need uh, money to pay my attorney. And, and, guys, you can email me or send me a check. Uh, my address is on the, my uh, email address, powderburns at prodigy.net. Or you can actually call me, and I'll give you um, the information, uh, 956-345-5770. Once again, 956-345-5770. We're going to get that out again next hour. But Selly is on the front lines for you. We've got to support him, ladies and gentlemen. We'll be right back with the fourth hour. Thank you for listening to GCN. Visit GCNlive.com today. Our beloved republic is on her knees. The forces of globalism are destroying national sovereignty worldwide. But in liberty's darkest hour, there is hope. For the first time in modern history, the people are beginning to wake up. It is essential that patriots worldwide accelerate their fellow man's understanding of the New World Order Master Plan. We have a short time frame to fully awaken and energize the people to meet this threat. In the Info War, PrisonPlanet.tv is a powerful weapon in the battle to regain our freedom. PrisonPlanet.tv is a vault of forbidden information. All 18 of my documentary films can be downloaded or streamed in super high quality directly to your computer or iPhone and shared with others. Thousands of special video reports, from tainted vaccines to martial law, can be found in this online video library. My weekly news television broadcast, thousands of exclusive audio interviews, and so much more. The Info War is waiting for you to set it free. Join PrisonPlanet.tv. Burn the info bombs to disk. Put them on the file sharing networks. Bring down the new world order. PrisonPlanet.tv. Waging war on corruption. Alex Jones on the GCN Radio Network. Stella Costello III, powderburns.org, is our guest for another 30 minutes, and I've got a huge news blitz coming up. Sorry, no calls today. But I think we're going to have open phones quite a bit throughout the week. We've got some huge guests coming up this week, though. But believe me, the news, you've got to stay with us for that. Uh, I want to get Shelly as a former police officer, former Army sniper, uh, former DEA agent who, who worked all sorts of you know, hardcore cases in Latin America, in D.C., all over the U.S. I want to get his uh, take on what happened to Raid uh, Hamad, Hamad, uh, who we now talked to the head of the Islamic Center, his, his, the biggest one in Austin where he went, that where they washed his body, and he was cut up, tortured all over, beaten. Uh, they said when they brought in the body, guts were all hanging out. None of that is on the news. Just, just sliced open, torn open everywhere. And it's just like Gary Webb, they blow his jaw off and shoot him in the side of the head, and they say he committed suicide. You know, he told his friends at his last house that he came home and guys were climbing down his pipe drain. Then the media spun it and said, oh, he lived in a one-story now. The point is, we said a year before he did that it was a pipe drain. His so-called friend, who he actually wrote about and said wasn't his friend, came out and said that, oh, it's quite normal to shoot yourself twice in the head. Cop of the year, uh, of course, uh, Taryn Chiaki, who brought out the people of Oklahoma City, who saw the BATF involved. He called his partner and said, feds are following me. I got the files. They told him to turn him turn the files in he had. Uh, he was tortured, stabbed, burned, electrical burns, two bullet holes in the back of the head. That's their own and their own autopsy. They said he shot himself twice in the back of the head. Uh, we had the uh, just all these other people they murdered, 
and then they do, and then they say that people commit suicide. And Sally, you know, you've talked about this. What does this uh, case sound like to you? Uh, I've got the APD's own report here from just, but but just from what I've told you, what does that sound like to you? Well, basically, what it is is they try to um, extract information from him. Uh, who uh, he contacted and so forth, and by doing that, they have to torture him, and then they'll uh, they'll kill him, and then basically the government runs the police, and the police are not going to uh, go against the government, and uh, uh, it'll probably more than likely be ruled suicide. But when in fact of the matter is that these things are continuing to happen for many many years. There's a uh, there's a lot of cases all over the country where this has occurred and continues to occur. And you described, in his case, there's no note. He told no one. But in some cases, there's even notes, and it's come out later that they were killed. And you described on air how that works. You walk in your house. They put you in handcuffs. They say, here's your kids. We're going to kill them if you don't write this down. Exactly. And uh, basically, I knew I know of two cases that uh, that's actually what happened. And they gave the guy to think about it. And he actually thought about it. He was happy at the very end of what he was going to do because, you know, he was saving his family. And he actually... Um, uh, uh, committed suicide by by them forcing him to do that, and uh, he did that. And sometimes they're forced to write a letter, and and uh, and then it happens. And what happens is the uh, the government is is good at doing that, and they do follow through on on killing a member of his family, whether it's an accident or a drowning or or something like that. But it does happen. Have you seen the movie uh, The Shooter? Uh, with 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 Wahlberg, where the government's got the apparatus, where they make you make you shoot yourself. Exactly. Yeah, that I saw that a lot of times in uh, Central America. Um, basically, you know, ironically enough, just recently in Guatemala, uh, the guys in my book, his name is Victor Rivera. He was a Venezuelan advisor for the death squads in Salvador and in Guatemala. He was involved in kidnapping a lot of the military officers and getting money from them, but he worked for the CIA. He was paid by Jack McCavitt as, as his case agent in, in Central America. So literally, he went to work for Guatemala, and the government of Guatemala hired him as an advisor, and he was involved in the shooting, uh, in the investigation of two of the congressmen from Salvador that were killed in Guatemala. Bottom line is, this guy just got whacked last week. I mean, he, two cars pulled over next to him, just shot the hell out of him. Uh, but he knew so much, and he was working for the CIA. Who do you think killed him? Well, it's probably the same government uh, and the CIA. He became a liability, and they whacked him. And, you know, he worked for so many years. If you work for the Central Intelligence Agency, you're, you're, you're usually protected. But when um, this happened, it comes to a point that this guy, stay there, we, stay we don't there. need him anymore. Good, stay there. It is a big idea. Let's continue uh, in the segment with Shelley, uh for the PrisonPlanet.tv viewers. Hey, Paul, I forget, do, do just the PrisonPlanet.tv members get this audio, too, or is this the audio we're sending out uh, uh, on all streams? Good, good, I'm good. I'm glad all the listeners get the audio. And, uh, you know, again, if they want to be PrisonPlanet.tv members, they can uh, go sign up and get the video as well. Uh, Sally, when we come back on air, I want to talk about your case more and give the number yeah. out and get because we have some stations that are picking up the fourth hour already, I think about ten of them. In just the second day, it's really growing. Uh, not 60-something like the earlier show, but, but still big. I want to get you some financial support and you talk about your case. But me, it's like you, you know you fight them, and it's like you can't help it. I know they may kill me. They, they tend to get you a decade, 20 years later. They always come. But it's just it's almost like a peaceful thing because we've gotten into this evil situation because men didn't stand up. And just someday the evil's got to stop. It just can't get worse and worse. And I just know that I'm committed. I'm too far down the road to stop. And uh, I don't know. It's almost a sense of peace. I am a little angry sometimes, though, because I, I want to go on vacation. I want to think about other things. Even if I'm on vacation, I can't quit thinking. I can't quit thinking about this. It's just how this evil's everywhere, how they do this. It's like it's it, they've robbed me of my life in a lot of ways. I'm not boohooing or saying I'm not happy. I'm actually happy. I just... Now, once you know about this evil and you learn more and more, you just it's all you think about because you just want to beat them because they're so bad. And then they call us saps because we're good guys. Yeah, so, you know, it's it's so sad because, you know, 
you know, a long time ago, you know, I took an oath to protect the Constitution of the United States and its and its citizens, and there's no expiration date on that. So I continue when I worked um, with the DEA as a police officer trying to protect the citizens, and and even when I exposed the corruption, I was still trying to protect the citizens of this country, and uh, there's no turning point. You know, you, you committed yourself to this. This is your life work. This is what you're going to do for the rest of your life. And even if I end up in prison, I'm still going to continue to uh, uh, my struggle against these atrocities that our government is occurring. And yet you're right. Uh, it's getting worse before it gets better. And I don't think it's going to get better. It, this is going to we're, we're I've never seen our government been so bold in what they're doing on their illegal activities. These atrocities that are happening in Latin America and all over the world. And even now in the U.S., when have you ever seen, uh, you know, every month and, and our soldiers are not being taken care of? You know that there's 18 veterans a day that commit suicide? The study just came out. Yes, 18 veterans coming out today. There were five. Uh, and those that don't kill themselves become cops. Stay there. We've exactly. got to go live here in just a moment. We'll come right back, uh, ladies and gentlemen, meeting the network right now. Dr. William Deagle at 888-212-8871. 888-212-8871. The Genesis Communications Radio Network proudly presents The Alex Jones Show. Because there's a war on for your mind. Shelly and I were talking during the break about 18 veterans a day. I saw the federal study last week committing suicide. Those that don't commit suicide. See, in World War II, they knew. In World War I, they knew. If you spent a year or 11 and a half months on average in a tour, uh, you would have about half the people have problems for the rest of their life, major mental problems. Because as tough as you are, really stressful, traumatic things, or even just a lot of hard work and working 18 hours a day, which happens in combat, it changes you for the rest of your life. You're either a workaholic, either you keep having that, you know, getting yourself to work that hard, uh, or uh, you just basically fall apart. And and there, you know, there's some ways to try to work on it. Well, now they have them stay. Some of them are starting their fifth tour in Iraq. I mean, they know these men. They, they no one has ever Korea, World War II, Vietnam. I mean, catch twenty two. You had to fly twenty two missions, and you still had more than a sixty percent chance of dying on your B seventeens going into Germany. They can only do twenty two missions. Okay, and it's called catch twenty two because yeah, only twenty two missions, but you're probably going to die anyways. Uh, you know that is the the situation. And, you know, and I never knew, I never even knew that my dad's dad was a B-17 gunner until he died. And then they, years later, dug open his almanacs with him in the plane and photos and letters and, you know, all the, his buddies and them getting shot up by the Germans. You know, the family didn't even, he wouldn't even talk about it. And that was just 22 missions over Germany. Uh, so, so my point is, is that now they're coming home to be cops and they're just, their minds are completely fried. Uh, Shelly, I mean, what would you have been like if you would have served five tours in Vietnam? Well, that, that, that would, that's really horrible, uh, to do that. And yet the, the army still, uh, saying that it's okay, that they'll, they'll be okay. And, um, of course it's not. And the majority of the veterans that come back want to go into law enforcement because they're still looking for that bullet with their name on it. I did it. I got out of Vietnam, went to school right away, became a became a uh, a police officer, detective sergeant, and then worked for the DEA for 12 years. And basically, that's that's what uh, we normally do. These ATF agents that arrested me, they're all veterans. Uh, one of them looks like he's really PTSD after serving 10 years in 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 uh, the war or in the military um, in the United States Army for 10 years. And uh, you know, you could tell, you can see it in his eyes. You know what what the problem is and you know a lot of us are talking about the Iraqi veterans but the, the bottom line is what do their eyes look like describe that and then get back into that they're, they're, the eyes are deep they're a thousand mile uh, eyes they call them uh, you know it's a big you know the guy is just really deep uh, looking at you whether he's listening to you or not listening to you he's just you know a, a, a glaze in the eye that can tell tells you right off the bat and you know what there were four suicides in Dallas. Uh, uh, 18 a day. You're going to make a point. Yeah, 18 a day, and there were four this year in Dallas uh, at the VA clinic, or uh, psychiatric ward in Dallas. So they had to close it down last week. Well, guess what? Three of the four were Vietnam vets. They hung themselves. 58 years old, and one was 57, uh, I think. 
Uh, one of them found him, and then he later went up there, uh, rented a garage, put his truck back in there, closed the door, and committed suicide. So we why? Veterans, I mean, you've got it. Why? Why? Why does it drive him to do? Well, that? because it, it's uh, you know it's just the older you get, the worse the PTSD gets on you. You know. Uh, you want to fight everybody. Everybody's against you emotionally. You're on medication. Uh, you, you can't sleep at night. I yeah. When ATF went into my house, I had guns in the doors of my house. I, I sleep with my door open uh, because I want to. I want to see who's coming in. Um, you know, you can't hold a job. Uh, you're married two or three times. Uh, you know, and it's the the, the signs are there and. Uh, uh, you know, we're talking about those guys doing three tours, four tours. Well, you know what? I did six straight years in Central America training that squads. Now tell me if that does not affect me. Of course it does. And then I come home, and, you know, I, I, was, I was talking to a group of veterans uh, just last week, and he said, you know, I feel so bad, so guilty because I got divorced, and I wasn't there for my kids. And he said, you know what? Don't feel bad. It's worse if you're there with the family and you take it out on them. And I have never, ever looked at that before. And, and, you know, I apologize every time. I talk to my kids three, four times a day. I talk to them because I want to tell them that I love them and I care about them. Uh, I mean, if I ever leave this world, I want to make sure that they know that. And, and it's devastating for them right now because I've always been there for them. That I'm not going to be there the next 10 years because I'm going to be in prison because of because of what I believe in, in, in doing. And, and because uh, the Second Amendment has to die. Exactly. So, you know, that's basically what it is, and, you know, we're, we're suffering. And what is your lawyer saying? What is the battle plan? How do we help you, Sally? I mean, you said my listener sent you around 1000 bucks That paid for half the lawyer just in last week's court. Exactly. You know, he's asking for 15000 and I, I ended up with about $1,000, and I had to pay him that $1,000 to, uh, to, to file the motion to... Uh, uh, not to show up for that hearing. And, uh, you know, I still need a lot of help. I know a lot of you, econom economic-wise, it's, it's very hard on everybody, the gasoline and so forth. But if you please send whatever. I had a lady send me $7. I had a young kid from high school send me $5. You know, that is great because, you know, people are getting educated. People are learning. And the more you send, the better. And prayers. I got over... 50 letters, 50 prayers from people. As a matter of fact, I got a lady, I have no idea who she is, but she sent me this on the mail. And that's for me to wear. And you know, it's a coupler. And it, 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 is, it is very important um, to, the, um, to those people that have actually sent me this, uh, prayers. I mean, I'm in their prayers every night. And people, you know, just um, become believers and, you know, in God Almighty, that he's, he'll be there for us. And I certainly hope, and if he doesn't, then that, that there's a reason for it. And, and I just hope that uh, everything turns out fine with me. Well, it's a really touching story, Sally. It's got tears in my eyes. And I want to talk about that, because a lot of these guys that work for the evil, they, they, they're they like caught up in a rat race. They're all stressed out. They're crazy. They believe the propaganda. It's about us against them. How do they do the evil? I've seen cops frame people all the time, and all these squad car videos are coming out now because people are putting hidden cameras in their, in their cars because they're so cheap. Where the cop pulls a young guy over, and the kid's nice, and the cops are screaming at him and says, I'll set you up. I'll win. I'll show you I'm the winner. You know, I'll show you who wins. And, 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 and I mean, you know, people. T how does cops take people's kids for CPS with no warrants, no abuse, no due process? How do they take old ladies' money and asset forfeiture seizure? I mean, you know, I know some of them are just evil, but a lot of them, they're like robots. Are they well, well, basically what it is, is this people here, this, this agents, that uh, it's a new generation now. Before, you used to have a little respect for the, for the, for the public. And now what it is, is that they, they think they're above the law. And a lot of times they are above the law. And basically... They like to cut corners to make cases, and uh, that's how they get promoted. The more cases you, you build, the more people you arrest, the more dr drugs you seize or guns you seize, that's how you get promoted. And, and so forth, and that's what they're looking for. They, and it's better to go after good citizens because they don't tend to fight back as much. Exactly. And, you know, they, 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 they prey on the weak. Uh, you know, uh, why, you know, the cartels. You know, what, I asked the ATF agent, that uh, one of the guys that... Uh, that searched the, the, I saw him at the gun show. I told him, I says, why don't you guys go after 
the American M16s that are being sold to the cartels in Mexico. You know what he said to me? He said, well, you know what? That's our government selling it to, to other third world governments, and those third world governments will sell them to the cartels. Well, I was about to say, and that's who's shooting at the Border Patrol and the FBI and exactly. sheriff's deputies. But expanding on that... Uh Bush wants to send $147 billion to the Mexican government to, quote, fight terror and drugs. That's to consolidate the drug dealing, isn't it? Exactly. It's, it's all profits to, to uh, you know, the war on drug has never worked. Enforcement has never worked. Well, it's worked to make more drugs. Though. Well, yeah, it is, and that's. But money. I mean, but I mean, not work the way they say. They're supposed to work, and yet uh, Congress keeps funneling millions of dollars into the drug uh, war, and we got more drugs today than we did ten, fifteen years ago. Why? Because that's what they use us to get scared on our kids uh, being on drugs and so forth. And, uh, you know, it doesn't work. We, we, we spend billions of dollars in source countries. We can't even make a dent. So basically, it's got to tell you that the answer's got to be uh, treatment, prevention, and so forth, but not enforcement, because enforcement has never worked. Shelley, uh, I want to get into this article, and they have links to mainstream news articles, and if you Google this, uh, you, you can go to the Transportation Authority in California, you can go to the news articles, where they're defending it. Out of the way, peasants, LewRockwell.com, it's up on PrisonPlanet.com, they are a special class of people, basically exempt from the law. It says they're allowed to drink and drive, speed, not pay tolls. And it says that it's the law enforcement, other government agencies, and their families. They get special plates. And uh, it goes into a 1978 program that started to protect the confidentiality of peace officers. So members of the public couldn't find their addresses on department motor vehicles. But it says over the years, the program has been expanded from one set of government workers to another. <laughs> And it just goes on to say that that they are allowed to do whatever they want now. I mean, this is this is insane that we've gotten to this point, Sally. Can you speak to that? Yeah, there's no accountability. Right now, we had a uh, a constable who used to work well that ran for a, a constable's position there in South Texas. Um, he worked for DPS for many years, and he finally got fired uh, because of uh, uh, family uh, violence. And, uh, you know, he, it was a very serious charge that he had on him. He had a couple of charges on him, um, and, and yet they were all of a sudden dismissed. And, uh, you know, he was fired. There was enough evidence to, to let him go fire him for that. And now he's running for or was running for constable down in South Texas, and, and thank God he lost because, you know, can you imagine a guy like that going into, uh, into more power of being a constable and, and, and abusing the citizens? Well, or, you're in this film, um, American Drug War, with uh, Kevin Booth and everybody else, and, and, and you've seen the video of uh, Sheriff Arpaio. And, I mean, he literally dr drives his car into businesses, stumbling around. He looks like he's on the, something. And he's just, when you talk to him, he, I've seen raw footage. The guy is publicly insane. Well, you know why? Because he's a Vietnam vet. I don't know if you're aware of that. Yeah, that, that he, he is a Vietnam vet. And, and former DEA. And former DEA. And guess who else? Our presidential candidate. McCain and they suffers he, from PTSD, but they will never bring it out. They say he's got a short fuse. No, it's his PTSD, post-traumatic stress disorder. We'll be right back. It is a big idea. Sally, we're going to continue talking here. Okay. We're, we're still rolling right for everybody out there viewing good. Um, cutting out my own commercials for my own videos, <laughs> talking about this stuff. It's so important. We're, we're going to have about five minutes left when we get back. But, Sally, uh, powderburns.org. People need to support you. Uh, we'll, we'll plug that at, uh, at the end in the book, okay. Powder Burns. Buying the book supports you, whatever you can do, listeners. And I really appreciate the listeners. I hate to come to you for this, but, but we're trying to support Selly, and, and he's a great guy. And he's, he's taken a lot of risks doing this. He's been threatened to expose government drug dealing. When they arrested him, they brought up American Drug War, uh, which he's a big part of and consulted on and in. Uh, but Shelly, just in the three minutes we got before we come back, there's a big audience listening right now on the web and watching us uh, on the webcam. Any other points you want to add? No, certainly. Uh, I just hope that uh, you guys continue to uh, to help me out financially. And, and, and your prayers, I, I strongly appreciate uh, that. But it's going to be a time where uh, letters are going to be submitted uh, when I go to court. And, uh, you know, the judge is supposed to be a very fair judge. And hopefully and certainly hope that uh, if he does, we have a letter campaign uh, on letters, uh, we'll We'll get up there and, and have you guys uh, send letters uh, and appreciating the fact that uh, what I've done for you guys in for the past years. 
Well, Shelly, we appreciate you. And, I mean, do these cops and BATF, do they have any shame how they're setting you up? Uh, absolutely not. They they think it's, uh, I'm going to lay down and, 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 and roll over for them. When so they, they think it's another big win. It's another big win for them. And, and like I've said, uh, to them, I was a big trophy. And they've been hunting me for quite a while. It's, it reminds me of that big deer with a with a big stack of horns on him that uh, they everybody's been after for so long, and they finally got him, but uh, he's wounded, not dead. So you know they they think that, uh, and doesn't surprise me. They'll come back with more charges or amend my uh, indictment just to to put more pressure on me to uh, uh, to plea out. I'm going from memory a week ago or so, but didn't they threaten you that to plea or they'd stack more? Well, that's basically what happened. I, I had on the plea bargain, I had about 20 guns to it, and then all of a sudden, when I got indicted, it's 35 guns. They're charging me with every gun that that guy bought, you know. And it, it, there's no proof on a lot of those guns that uh, you, you can't prove it. You know, you go, they're going back for a but, year. But, but again, it's not even illegal what you did. They well, selectively enforced. They selected and enforced me, and and yet there's people out there at the gun shows doing the same thing uh, that they've been doing for years. Yet they'll they'll select. Uh, People like me, they're mostly uh, ex-law enforcement. And to them, an ex-law enforcement is, is a big trophy. Well, it's like, I'm not saying you did anything wrong, but in another case, a guy that they had running a private prison in, in Afghanistan where they torture people to death under orders. Now the memos are public and the Bush ordered it's public. And they were going to send a guy to prison, and the guy said, I've got the orders. And they seized him under Patriot Act, wouldn't allow him defense, and sent their own torturer to prison, gagging him and not letting him defend himself under a terrorist statute, and now it's all come out. So here, you, you've done nothing, and why do they love burning their own? Well, it's because um, they're trying to say that they're doing their own laundry uh, in-house, and when in fact they're... they're uh, Everybody's, you know, it's like toilet paper. They use you. Uh, you know, you do uh, do the best thing you can for your country. And, uh, you know, one of the things that I did that I'm not, uh, you know, when I trained all that squads, you know, I kept pictures. I kept documents. I I kept journals because that's going to be my defense of what they have asked me to do uh, for my government. And, and, you know, they can actually come back and prosecute me for that. And, and that'd be it, you know. But I, I have exposed them. On the get go, and I will continue to do the same thing. Uh, there will be okay, no. We got to go, go, go back on air right now. Here we go. Final segment with Sella Costello, an intense news blitz for the final 30 minutes of the show coming up in the next segment. Sally, we're talking about how these guys feel good persecuting you and hopping things up against you, cooking them up. Um, on a lighter note, what do you think of uh, the final edition of American Drug War that's aired over 50 times on Showtime? The cops that set you up uh, for you basically laughed about it. So, so that means it's getting out there. I'm, I'm hearing a buzz everywhere. Uh, about the film, give us uh, your take on that. Well, it's an excellent uh, tape. Not to blow my horn on, because I'm uh, in the in the uh, the thing here, uh, the the DVD. But it's for the first time ever. We have the director of the of the DEA admitting that the CIA ran ran drugs back in the eighties from Central America. We had CIA agents uh, McFarland out of Honduras. Uh, who shipped uh, large quantities of cocaine, over a thousand kilos, to the U.S. Uh, to profit the covert operations that are being conducted by uh, by the CIA. Uh, you know, Noriega. You know, everybody's admitting to the whole thing. Noriega is being denied a part, uh, not a pardon, but a, a release from prison because George Harbor Bush is scared that uh, he might spill the guts, uh, his guts out on on what he knows, uh, what he did with. Uh, with uh, our government back in back in the 80s. Well, I hope people will get it at InfoWars.com. It's not in stores until uh, May 24th, but I have a deal with a filmmaker because I consulted on it, as you did, that we are selling it now uh, at InfoWars.com, where you can call 888-253-3139 to get American Drug War. Uh, it's got three hours of extras. I mean, you're going to have a master's degree on how they bring it in, how they control it, how it's a fraud, how prescription drugs kill a lot more. How alcohol 
kills hundreds of thousands than marijuana. It is just such an important film, uh, really a masterpiece, almost five years in the making by Kevin Booth. I started working on him, uh, working with Kevin on this five years ago. Of course, 90% of it, 98% of it was his work. I was just honored to be involved with it. And again, available at InfoWars.com. Sally, in closing, uh, one way people can support you and get your book, what well, you got like 300, 400 copies left. When it's gone, it's out of print. Powder burns. The story of the government dealing the drugs, you witnessing it. it. It's a read you can't put down. And if people will just buy it from you, that will help you try to pay for the lawyer and beat these people. That way they can donate and actually get something back. Can you comment on that? Absolutely. Uh, you know, every little bit helps. Uh, I got about 300 copies left. And, um, uh, you know, I do want to sell them so I could get my financial support for my attorney and my defense, my legal defense. Um, and go to my website, powderburns.org, or, or you can email me directly at powderburns at prodigy.net. And I'll now, to be clear, last week people had to call you or get your address to send you checks. Uh, now you've got a donation PayPal at powderburns.org. Exactly. It's it's a link there, and you can go straight to it, and uh, I'll ship you out the uh uh, the books, um, and whatever donations, I always send a thank you card for it also. Yeah, I got and a thank you card prayer. from you, Sally. By the way, I don't want thank you cards from you. <laughs> okay. You're too busy fighting for your life and yeah. your family right now, and we appreciate your courage. Well, thank you, sir. So just don't don't worry about sending me a thank you card. I got your thank you card. I appreciate it. Yes, sir. In fact, it's right here on my desk. Look right here. Got uh, Sally's thank you card right here. Very, very nice little thank you card. That's powder burns. Yep, and uh, you got, got me a little thank you thing here. From the from the from, from the book, uh, thank you uh, from my heart. Uh, sent, sent that out right after the show, April eighth. Uh, Shelly, you got three minutes left or a minute and a half. Anything else you want to add? No, uh, just uh, your prayers will certainly be appreciated. Um, uh, I've gotten a lot of prayers from a lot of people, uh, a lot of uh, prayer books, a lot of uh, you know. You can tell that the American people are very very sincere. I got over 50 letters of people trying, uh, supporting me, uh, sending me donations, uh, little donations, but uh, they mean everything, and also the purchase of the books. Uh, like I said, I got plenty of books, and I still need a lot of financial help. And one real fast thing, I need somebody to donate a tractor trailer, a little riding lawnmower tractor, because I'm going to be doing a pilgrimage all the way from Macallan to San Antonio in protest with PTSD for veterans. And um, I'm trying to get an old tractor so I can ride it up here. It's going to take me three or four days and hopefully uh, bring awareness to the you veterans. You want somebody to you. loan you a, a farm trailer because it'll get a lot of attention. A, a little, yeah, a little tractor trailer or, or riding lawnmower, something that I that I can actually drive all the way from Mac Allen into San Antonio with a banner saying, you know, support uh, veterans with PTSD. Well, and they should go with you and support you exactly. and maybe videotape it, put it on YouTube exactly. to bring attention. Well, uh, Sally, give out your phone number. My number is 956-345-5770. Once again, 956-345-5770. Sally, I want to thank you for spending time with us. Thank you, Alex, for having me. It's an honor to be with you. You bet. Thank you, my friend. And we'll have Sally in uh, every month or so as this uh, case of political uh, persecution intensifies. And they've told him they were going to get him for his political activities here in the land of the cowards, home of the slaves. Hopefully we can change that back to what we once were. We've never been perfect, but we are very shameful today. But thank you for all your support of Sally. News Blitz straight ahead. Stay with us. We'll be right back. We're on the march. The Empire. Sally, thanks right. for coming in, Yes, man. sir. Thank you, man. Really appreciate it. Yes, sir. Really appreciate it, And brother. thanks, thanks, okay. man. I'll, I'll come back to you and let you know. God bless.
PrisonPlanet.tv. Okay, I'm back in game. Blueprint for global enslavement. You have been warned. What if I say I'm not like the others? What if I say I will never surrender? Yeah, Stella Castillo is a real hero. And he had commendations from two presidents. He was going way up the chain. And then he's witnessed the death squads, the people he was training, the government drug dealing. He wrote letters to the presidents. He was told to shut up. It's like Terry Reid in the CIA. He was just mid-level training pilots and kind of running part of the airport. And they'd be unloading cocaine. He's like, what the hell is this, man? They're like, come on, you've been involved in Vietnam and everything. You know what goes on. He's like, yeah, but I'm not going to be part of this. I mean, that's how these people operate. And then the SWAT team in your house and all these cops get killed fighting the drug war. But what what are they going to do? we got millions of cops now, millions of bureaucrats, millions of people in prison. they got to do something. We ought to make a deal with the cops. Look, we'll let you have two million cops like there are. We'll just pay you paychecks and go drink lemonade. I mean, they just don't hurt us anymore. I mean, they already, the more cops we get, they won't come to your house when you're robbed. Have you noticed that? Back when I was a kid and there was 250,000 cops, then it was 300,000, then it was a million, then two million. Man, something happened. The cops were there in five minutes and they were, oh, we're going to investigate this. They were actual officers. Were they corrupt? Yes. Were they perfect? No. But most of them were good. It is not that way now. I can't get a cop out to my house if it gets burglarized. I can't get a cop when my car gets stolen. But you know what, ladies and gentlemen? You pull over on the side of the road and try to urinate, they'll take you to jail for exposing yourself. You, uh... Everybody I know isn't speeding now. They just get pulled over and they want to search your car. In fact, all these emails are pouring in where you'll just be in a shopping mall parking lot. And they'll just stop everybody and search them. Or on the road, it's just they're just searching us. It's in the news. They're 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 running these martial law drills. I said I was going to news blitz, and I'm already ranting. Okay, here is the stacks of news that I have, and there is a lot of it. And so I am just going to go through it uh, as fast as I can. Oh, my gosh. Where to start? Where to begin? Oh, man. I... Okay, this is the stack of what I have not covered yet. Good God. Probably 60 articles. Okay. Let's just go ahead and give you the brief version of what's going on. Christina Todd Whitman not liable for telling residents the World Trade Center air was safe to breathe. Judge rules Associated Press, and I will just give you the backstory. You can Google this. They knew day one it was deadly, and the White House ordered her to lie day two when she sent a memo saying it's deadly, asbestos, concrete, toxins. The meters are off the charts. It's a, a chemical uh, disaster. And they were ordered to lie and say it was good, and she is not liable. That is Associated Press. Okay, that is one article. Behind TV analyst Pentagon's hidden hand, this is a New York Times whitewash, but admitting that every one of the military um, analyst is on the Pentagon payroll or control, lying to the public. There that is for you in the video cam. Recapping, uh, I had Dr. Ibrahim Dramali on the show today to talk about how it looked like he'd been tortured and murdered, uh, the local Palestinian activist, and thrown in the river. Unbelievable. That's about to retransmit when the show restarts feeding on the Internet. Uh, unbelievable first hour coming up. Unbelievable second hour coming up in about 25 minutes. Oh, let's get technical. 22 and a half. Um Colorado lawmaker removed from podium over Mexican's remark, even though I disagree with his remark. He shouldn't be removed. That's a violation of free speech. Colorado legislature, known for kicking a photographer, was ordered to leave the podium, the state house representatives on Monday, because he called Mexican workers illiterate peasants. 
Now, I don't know if that's an unmean way to say it, but they do get free health care, free everything. They are above the law like the police. They don't get arrested for DWI, and they are illiterate peasants. That's what the Mexican government calls them. Uh, but I don't agree with the way he did it. He should have. But if you actually read the quote, they took it a little bit out of con- uh, a little bit out of context. He said, "I would like to have the opportunity to state the microphone why I don't think we need five thousand more illiterate peasants in Colorado." Bruce said, and "They call it an outburst." Well, the point is, it could have been more tactfully done. But everything is bankrupting. I mean, I, there was an article in uh, Washington Post about how illegals get tens of thousands of free liver heart, kidney transplants, and go to the head of the line? Because you can't discriminate, so they have to go to the head of the line. Told you when my finger was cut off, I couldn't get service, but the illegals could. Vets of Bush's war, Sue VA, more than half wounded troops slipping through the cracks, alternate, not getting uh, treatment. Summit renamed to defend North American Union critics. Bush and Mexican-Canadian leaders in New Orleans for a fourth annual meeting. As the fourth annual summit of the Security and Prosperity Partnership of North America begins in New Orleans, White House is engaging in public relations campaign to reposition the meeting away from the controversial issue of continued continental integration. Build instead the North American Leaders Summit. They've changed it. The meeting appears designed to create photo opportunities showing President Bush with Mexico's President Felipe Calderon and Canada's Prime Minister Stephen Harper rather than emphasize the trilateral cooperation the centerpiece of the previous SPP summits They've got their own documents where they admit that they are merging all of this and say they've got to keep it secret from us, and then it's a North American union. That's the September 22nd to 24th BAMP Canada lawsuit documents available at judicialwatch.org. There is that, kind of like DynCorp changed its name after it got caught running giant child kidnapping rings. By the way, you can't make stuff up like that. Go look into it. Find out it's true. I know you're a cop laughing in your car, but that's who you work for, okay? Go look it up and then cry your guts out and realize you work for Satan himself, okay? It's all over. I'm surprised I'm even alive. I, I, I thank God every day. I, I, it's, just, it's unbelievable. Food rationing confronts breadbasket of the world. AP and everybody else are reporting. I got a stack of these from yesterday I never even got to. That food rationing's already begun. Lots of food, you'll notice, isn't on store shelves now. Staples, corn, wheat, bread, things that it's involved with. The prices are up 40%, exploding. Everything we told you would happen uh, because the dollar is plunging in value and there's problems worldwide. Big Agra is engineering uh, this collapse. Uh, Kurt Nemo wrote a detailed article about that last night. Uh, with all their official U.N. documents on InfoWars.com, if you want to actually know what they're doing. Olympic torch anti-freedom farce continues. Media banned from torch rally through nation's capital. In Australia, uh, they are banning the media from covering the Olympic torch, where Chinese paramilitary force forces have attacked U.S. citizens, British, French, and others. Unbelievable. Can't let the slaves know what's going on. U.S. military uh, denies German citizen, uh, detains German citizen in Afghanistan. Little report on that. Can't be there covering what's happening. And the suspicion of terrorism. The report is, though, that it's a aid group. Uh, feds change policy, will now collect DNA from every person they arrest, and that means local police under federalization. And now you know why at checkpoints all over the country they're taking blood and tissue out of your cheeks in the last year they've been doing it. Really, it goes back a decade, but now it's nationwide. They're not admitting, uh, and by the way, I heard Derry Brownfield reading mainstream news today on air on the network, uh, and I pulled it up, there it was. Mainstream news is now announcing that every baby at birth is put in a DNA database for the government. They don't tell you, though, that's been going on for 35 years criminally. The government is criminal. You understand? F- feds change policy, will now collect DNA from everybody. So so they're basically now just, just the whitewashing what they're doing. So they announce what they're doing decades after it's in place. New Jersey court requires subpoena for Internet subscriber records. Uh, that's something attacking um, uh, free speech on the web. Oh, man. There's a report up on prisonplanet.com about We Are Change being provocateur and set up in New York, not just in Ireland. And that's also at wearechange.org right there. Um, Groombell says financial system narrowly averted collapse. 
Uh, this says uh, Oswald Rubel, well-known ex-CEO of Credit Suisse Bank, confirms in an interview given to Swiss newspaper Sotensblock that the world financial system was sharply nearer to collapse in mid-March when Bear Stearns collapsed without intervention. The central bank, the system, would have not survived. He compared the moment with the Cuba crisis, with the Cuban Missile Crisis, as I see it the first time that an insider spoke so clearly about the dramatic situation of our days, one bank collapsing, he added, and the whole system will crash. Wow. So there is that. Border fence leaves rich and powerful untouched. The Texas Observer. And uh, it says that they are not really even building it. They're just using it piece by piece to grab people's property and then leaving large areas owned by rich people or special interest alone. Yeah, they're not. They've built like 40 miles of fence. They're supposed to have the whole thing built two years ago. And they only build it in selective areas. And they put openings in it for, quote, wildlife to go through, and then drainage ditches that a man can bend down only halfway and go right underneath. That story is um, up on PrisonPlanet.com and InfoWars.com. In Florida, snooping cops disguise cameras as fire hydrants. Kurt Nemo gets into that, and they just randomly surveil everyone, saying that everyone could be terrorist. So uh, that report is up there. Not getting into much detail here because this is the news that I do read in detail and then never have a chance to properly cover on air. Pipe down, Brussels slaps a noise order on the heart of Scotland. That's right. They're they're telling bus drivers they've got to stop every 25 miles, get everybody off to walk for their health. Uh, They're saying you can't use pounds at your grocery stores. You'll be arrested. People are. They're saying what speech you can and can't have. It's all about the EU showing England how they're under their control. England always swore they'd allow a vote on it. Doesn't matter. They signed uh, the EU uh, uh, court agreement. Now they're under EU tyranny. Pipe down Brussels slaps a noise order on the heart of Scotland. Their high-pitched skrill has put fear into the hearts of Scotland's enemies and sensitive tourists reaching for the cotton wool. Well, I love the sound of bagpipes. Now, however, the bagpipes are uh, to be quieted by an edict from Brussels. From this month on, pipers will adhere to strict volume limits or risk breaking European Union health and safety rules. Now, remember, the European Union allows the mosquito system, ultra-low frequency that actually damages your ears, to be put out in city streets to, quote, keep kids from congregating. You can damage your ears, but, oh, you can't have bagpipes. They pick things that sound ridiculous, to set these precedents, if they can make you do something dumb, like take your shoes off or be strip searched at the airport or not carry shampoo on or have checkpoints on the highway without warrants, you'll, you'll accept anything. So now uh, they're saying that they are banning bagpipes. They're also saying they're not allowed to use the particular wood out of Africa. They're trying to ban it there. They attack cultural icons to set precedents because if you'll accept that, you'll accept anything. Classic Pavlovian conditioning, hardcore behavioral psychology, black op attack. There is that article, Times of London. Not playing games. AT&T uh, serves notice. Internet has three years before it faces Borg assimilation. Kurt Nemo, InfoWars.com. He has their own statements about how they're going to shut down the old web, make you go on the new web, where you have to pay much more, and where there's no freedom of speech because you'll have subdomains on their sites. So all of those busy on the message boards at InfoWars, where we let you do it unless you slander or threaten people to kill them, uh, we also had people that, that would go on there and threaten themselves and then say, how dare you not kick them off? We'd trace the IP. It was the same guys. So we do kick some people off, but it's pretty wild. You can do pretty much what you want there as long as it's serious and, and, and not kill this person, kill that person. We have already had the Secret Service drop by, so uh, nice try, guys. We tracked it back to you. Uh, so uh, that's why that's going on there. Uh, but, uh, oh, you didn't know about that? Yeah, that happened. <laughs> um, AT&T... Again, that's how they're shutting it down. It's called Internet 2. Uh, funding worries Fusion Center officials. Another unfunded mandate uh, by the federal government. In the late 90s, they built emergency management centers in rural areas, in four- and five-county areas, in big cities. They made the citizens pay for it with unfunded mandates locally. They integrate the police under federal control to run checkpoints, martial law sweeps in their own words. But now the feds aren't even going to pay for any of it. We've got to all pay for it ourselves. 
So uh, just another tax of Big Brother there for you. Uh, that's out of FCW.com, big uh, site that tracks government, a federal computer weekly. Uh, U.S. military targets southwest Colorado. They're busy land grabbing, shoving around whoever they want, doing whatever they want. Uh, that's out of Renew America. Uh, food rationing begins in America, KPTM television. Food shortages and rationing have been a third world problem as of late, but recently the phenomenon once thought unthinkable in the United States could start happening. The New York Sun paper is reporting that major retailers of both coast are limiting consumers' purchase of flour, rice, and cooking oil. The Sun reports that Costco warehouse in California ran out of rice. Frustrating shoppers, where's the rice? An engineer from Palo Alto, California, said you should be able to buy something like rice. This is ridiculous. Not in the new global system. You read State Department Memorandum 200 and all their other official documents. This is all stated by them. And Richard N. Haas, head of the CFR, said in a public uh, CFR document last year, and he said similar things in 93 when he wasn't chairman, in a Club of Rome document that we posted on PrisonPlanet.com, direct links to him, that terror is fake, that that the global warming is fake, but that it's perfect unifying system to, quote, wage war on humans by the elite. Public stated, as I told you, and then somebody found their own documents where they said exactly what I'm saying. I mean, it's not hard. It, it's a public attack pattern. You, this whole anti-terror thing is for you. The whole environmental deal is to restrict and tax and control you while they engage in total environmental Armageddon with the genetic engineering and the rest of it. The fish infusion, cyclotrons, all of it. It's just insane. If you don't know what cyclotrons are, you better find out, ladies and gentlemen. Food shortages or globalist depopulation agenda. This is the key article that Nemo did yesterday. You know, he spent hours doing this. You ought to go read it. Food shortages or globalist depopulation agenda. Continuing. Recycling cops freak out residents. This already happened in England where they have tracker chips that track you. They check to make sure you're putting your bottles and things in there or they fine and fee you. Uh, there you go. Recycling cops freak out residents. Ah, yes. The new Enviro spies. They have all these white papers written. Where you think CPS is bad and the cops are bad, they're going to have Enviro cops, home inspections every month. I mean, how big your house can be, any changes in your home. Just hell on earth, folks. Just absolute total control. Just just unthinkable. Metals. Gold rises on weak dollar. Oil goes to all-time high. There is that for you. Uh, we are changed to release assault videos. Just someone running around waving signs saying that... They, that we are changed did the bombing of the recruiting center wearing Hitler mustache. I mean, this is just all these people. A lot of you are sucked into this no plane thing. You don't understand it's a total black op. Uh, I saw it coming a mile away. Final segment, totally jam packed with documents and articles on the other side. Stay with me, ladies and gentlemen. PrisonPlanet.tv. You can trace every disease, every illness, and every ailment to mineral deficiency. That is a quote from two-time Nobel Prize winner Linus Pauling. Because fruits and vegetables in their raw form are better absorbed, retained, and utilized than if heated, the Champion Juicer is the best way to get your nutrients your body craves. The Champion Juicer chews the fibers and breaks up the cells of vegetables and fruits. This gives you more fiber, enzymes, vitamins, and trace minerals. Juicing a combination of raw fruits and vegetables is dot documented to not only treat minor illness, but also is shown to reverse once thought incurable life-threatening diseases. Juicing with the Champion Juicer also promotes fast, healthy weight loss and pure body cleansing. Put the Champion Juicer to work for you and your family. Get creative with your juicer and add a grain mill attachment to make your own healthy, fresh flour. The Champion Juicer also makes great nut butters and frozen sorbets. The world's finest juicer is Champion Juicer. Ask for it at your favorite health food store online today. Honey, I'll be right back. Brittany, your husband looks so good tonight. I just worry about his high blood pressure. He gets uptight so easily. I know. My Gary has high blood pressure and high cholesterol. I always think about the what if. I yeah. know. Ladies, you need to get your husband's Cocoa Pure Chocolate Tea. Chocolate Tea? That sounds delicious. The information is all over the news. Cocoa without the high fat and an extract from red wine are both shown to have heart benefits, including supporting healthy blood pressure and cholesterol levels. See, I told you chocolate was good for us. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> to try Coco Pure risk free, call 1 800 457 9914. Coco Pure contains a red wine extract and pure cocoa and is natural and healthy for anyone. Coco Pure is especially recommended for those with high blood pressure, high cholesterol, or a family history of heart disease. Call now for your delicious risk free trial. Call 1 800 457 9914. That's 1 800 457 9914. Now, from the makers of Loose Change, the most downloaded film in Internet history, comes the long-awaited release of Loose Change Final Cut, an entirely new two-hour film that completely destroys the official fable forever. Loose Change Final Cut hopes to be a catalyst for a new independent investigation in which family members receive answers to their questions and the true perpetrators of this horrendous crime are brought to justice. Loose Change Final Cut is the ultimate 9-11 expose. From hijackers being trained at U.S. military bases to bombs in the buildings, Loose Change Final Cut is the one 9-11 film everyone must see. Secure your copy of Loose Change Final Cut today at InfoWars.com or PrisonPlanet.com. While you're visiting the online video store, be sure to check out the huge discounts on films like Endgame, Blueprint for Global Enslavement, America, Freedom to Fascism, and hundreds of other titles. We're in a no-holds-bar information war. Truth is our weapon, and PrisonPlanet.com has the tools you need to take the fight back to Big Brother. got some big guests coming up this week on the show and next week i'm just going to give you a fair warning Burmis will be filling in thursday i got four guests two of them are huge on uh friday big guests next week a lot of other surprises for you the viewers and the listeners sheriff's back three jails for illegal immigrants news 19 sounds reasonable in myrtle beach but when you read it's federally funded locally run prisons Four illegal aliens and terrorists, and uh, they have a few of these for shows. They have one outside Austin, and they mainly just harass Arabs and a few other people. The illegals have been caught literally cleaning the prison. It's like the illegals were caught building the border prison under the border uh, uh, fence. So you can't make this stuff up. Uh, so there is that article. That's the problem, is that this is, uh, again, all staged. Very sophisticated, the, the people that run things. 50% of L.A. workforce are immigrants, UPI. And the problem is, I've talked to people that are chefs there, black, white. If you're not a Mexican, you don't get hired now. They'll run you out of the uh, the, the, the um, dry cleaning business. And this is what's happening. This is racism. I'm not saying all Hispanics do this, but the La Reconquistas do, especially in L.A. Uh, you're not allowed, you, you can't work in the restaurant. You can't work uh, in custodial services. And it's... Uh, 50% of L.A. workforce are immigrants. And, of course, 75% of the children there, half the, more than half the children in Texas are. And the problem is they're not being taught to love this country. They're being taught by the Ford Foundation that this is Mexico. Uh, also, oil, as I mentioned, goes record above 118 a barrel. There's the actual number on that. I mean, this is just unbelievable. Absolutely amazing. Disney launching unit to make environmental films for children. AP, this will be shown in schools everywhere. All about worshiping Gaia, giving your rights up, hating humanity, making humans the enemy, in the words of the chairman of the CFR. But, of course, an enemy the government, the Pentagon, are willing to deal with. Oh, yes, their eugenics program. So there's the Disney launching unit to make environmental films. More convicted felons allowed to enlist in Army and the Marines. That's ABC News. I have another AP article uh, on this as well. And they only give you a small percentage of them. I remember eight years ago seeing a, in Washington papers, Washington Times, Washington Post, what they reported. They said it was very good, of course. You can pull them up. That aggravated felons who were illegal aliens were being hired out of the prisons. And I still get emails saying I'm making this up. Here is uh, AP for you if you'd rather have that. Uh, also, uh, surgeons give hope to blind with successful bionic eye operation. Yeah, they've already are able to give people sight now. It's not as good as regular sight, but it's it will be soon, and it's just amazing and wonderful. And this is why the elite want to kill eighty percent of us or more because they don't want the general public having access to all of this. It's a revolution they're trying to suppress, and they use homeland security and the global tyranny to suppress all the real technologies that have been developed. 
Uh, Bank of America net income falls 75%. They're in deep trouble. That's Bloomberg Financial for you. Uh, Tony Snow to go to CNN. Who cares? Sending Marines to recruit women. Uh, Japan's hunger becomes a dire warning for other nations. Major food shortages in Japan. Uh, I am out of time, ladies and gentlemen. I hope that you will all join me live tomorrow, 11 a.m. to 3 p.m. here on the one, the only GCN Radio Network. I want to thank all the PrisonPlanet.tv members who subscribe, who get the live video cam feeds, document cams, the rest of it, get it archived within a few hours of the show at PrisonPlanet.tv. If you don't have a membership, think about it. I want to thank the folks in here running the show in Texas. John Harmon up in Minnesota running it from that end. I just want to commend everybody and thank you. My first and second hour today were unbelievably important clear evidence of uh, the local person being murdered. Tune in right now at InfoWars.com. Right now for retransmission at InfoWars.com. You can go there and hear the first and second hour. Thank you for listening to G. Awesome show, Jones.